right, it's the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Memphis Grizzlies, and I made a preview about this on my personal channel. Go check it out if you guys would like besides this. But with that being said, what I spoke here, there's two ways to go. I think this is a six to seven game series mm. regardless. The front court for the Memphis Grizzlies is going to be Xavier Tillman, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Santi Aldama. That's where I think the weakest position for the Grizzlies going against the Lakers. And Rocket News, I agree with you. I actually said I envisioned this series going to seven games, Lakers winning it. If it goes to six games, I would not be surprised that the Grizzlies win it in six. But in my opinion, I have the Lakers winning in seven. Anthony Davis and LeBron James, all right, are going to have to feast and dine on the paint. And this is a team, they got to come out here and just be more physical and just attack the paint. They don't need to rely on their three-point shooting. Just be the bigger team. Your thoughts? I don't know if the funny comment. Yeah. I, you know, it's kind of weird, actually. The... The narrative, if you watch like ESPNs right now, everyone's taking the Lakers to the finals. I, I kind of like being the outlier that's been saying it since the trade deadline. But yeah, this is my Western Conference finalist in the Los Angeles Lakers. I actually dreamt about Steven Adams last night. It was so weird. That will never be a fag. Again. Why was he? I was like, oh my God, Steven Adams is in this game. Yeah, fucking weirdo. Anyways, uh, Dylan Brooks got what he asked. Um, you know, he'd take LeBron in a seven-game series. Well, you know what? Personally, I'd take Dylan Brooks in a seven-game series. Ja's going to be able to, you know, he, Ja's going to do his thing. Triple J is going to do his thing. But I think at the end of the day, LeBron and AD, now they're well-rested. They're going to be rested into Sunday. I think that's a big, big factor as well. But if they can get D'Lo to make like two shots, that's going to go a long way. I'm a little bit worried about Vanderbilt. Uh and Triple J, he has a good track record against Triple J, but like last night, you really saw Minnesota like couldn't care less about him on offense. I know how you beat Triple J, and I know this is like kind of me just thinking like, oh, this is what everyone's thinking. Triple follow J him. averages five fouls a night. You know <laughs> that, right? Out. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I said tack the paint. Just tell AD, LeBron, and every other player. You see Jaron Jackson Jr. just drive straight at him. Just have him yeah. try to block your shot because he's going to foul you. Get the guy in foul trouble, game's over. Yeah, it's the 2K uh, fucker game plan right there. Just get him to foul out. It's like so greasy. But they, you know, I think Triple J is going to like still be a stud. It, it was like last night where it's like the Lakers are the leading free throw team in the NBA. I'm watching last night's game and it's like the middle of the third quarter and combined Austin Reeves, AD, and LeBron, they have like four free throws. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Attack the goddamn rim. Dennis Schroeder comes in, he picks up the pace, he starts getting down the hill. Carl Anthony Towns gets into some stupid foul trouble on their back. But yeah, the Lakers are just going to have to be aggressive. They're also going to have to make some shots and also don't turn the ball over like 20 times. But I think you're overlooking. This be yeah, this is gonna be a great. This is gonna be a great defensive matchup. This might be one of the worst offensive outings you'll see. You got the 15th best offense wow. in the Grizzlies. Well, like, look, the Grizzlies historically, when it comes to the playoffs, their half court offense sputters. Nothing. I'm not taking any shots. They typically in the half court, especially in the playoffs, have struggled to generate consistent looks or you know, scoring opportunities in a row. So that is one of my biggest concerns. And since John Moran has came back from the suspension, he has not shot well from three. This team has not, you know, besides Luke Kennard and Dil uh, not Dylan Brooks, Luke Kennard and Desmond Bain, yeah. there is not really, would you say, maybe John Conchar... This is your other three points. There's not like a, a there's there's not a ton triple of J? triple J, but he as takes what like shooters. Yeah, I mean, but he takes what one, two, threes a night. Not like, like he's not a like a shooter, shooter, right? Yeah. Like, the same but, thing applies for Memphis. They're gonna get downhill, get in transition, run the basketball, get AD in some foul trouble. You mean Lakers? And, uh, oh wait, oh oh no, oh, keep, keep keep the Lakers on their heels, uh, or keep them on their toes. 
it's gonna be a phenomenal series. It might be one of the best series we get all playoffs here. And I haven't forgotten, obviously, about the John Morant, Stephen Adams, Uncle you know Kenny situation. Lofton had 42 points and 14 yeah. rebounds to close out the season. Yeah. It's just wild. That's absurd. Yeah. <laughs> I I think Lakers is in if Steven Adams was playing i would take the grizzlies it's wild i think steven adams is a is a skilled basketball player but i don't think he'd make it's like oh, no. it's like kevon looney like no he's, no, he's no still no. not sniffing 20 plus stop 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 no you're overlooking if steven adams and brandon oh. Clark were here they oh. would have more you wouldn't have to worry about jaron jackson jr foul trouble mm. you then you would have jaron jackson jr xavier tillman santi aldama brandon clark and steven adams to go up against Anthony well, Davis and Wayne and Gabriel and you know Tristan Thompson, whoever else. I'd just there. go small. Go I small. know, but so do you just uh, casually threw in Tristan Thompson like he's gonna sniff the court? I know, I know, um, I know, I know. I, I just... <laughs> but yeah, Steve Adams, he he is a he's a skilled basketball player, and I'm, they obviously be and Brandon Clark as well. They'd be they'd be better off with them, but unfortunately, they don't have them. And I so just that would makes say this decision a lot easier too. I think they would outright win if they had both Adams and Clark. I would think they would just be the bigger team. Yeah, I, you know, maybe logically, I don't think there's much of a flaw in there. I just think it's more for me. Uh, one team has LeBron James, who's the best passer in the NBA. Behind uh, Trey Young. No. What Come on, mean? Aaron, help me out here. Who's